This is a video about live feeding versus uh, frozen thawed feeding. Your snakes, rats, or mice. So these are my pet rats. This is Sephiroth. This is you. This is Mac. Just, just jumped off. That's Mac. And this is Jack. Jack and Sephiroth are brothers. They were from the same breeder. And um, the sweet one right here that just climbed on my lap is Mac. He is, ta-da, a feeder rat. So, um, frozen thawed or live? I'm not trying to make a video for you to pity um, your prey, uh, feeder so that way you, I'm forcing you to feed frozen thawed. I'm not. I'm actually not against live feeding. I have fed live, as mentioned in my previous videos. Hey buddy, I have fed live hoppers and live rats. Many of Mac's brothers and sisters, mostly brothers, were fed off to my ball python. So I do feel bad about it. At the same time, I don't because my snake needed to eat. It is what, what it needs to be done. So the first the pros and cons is that rats, these are, by the way, they're grown adult male rats. So when you get a feeder, unless you have a grown adult snake, you usually won't be picking these this type of size unless you choose not to switch and then your snake grows up. Like a boa constrictor, for example, would need something bigger than this size of a rat. Probably an extra large jumbo rat or even moving up to rabbits. Um, so now the main drive of not going feeding live is the teeth. I don't think I can get him, get him to show you his teeth. Can I? Nope. Nobody. You're too cute. They have these teeth in their mouth that bites hard. I've been bitten one time by Mac by accident. He was freaking out um, from something else. So he bit me by accident and it bled like crazy on my own finger. And rats are known to attack snakes if they're, uh, they realize that they're in danger. So they will defend themselves. They're not shy about it. They're smart animals. They know if there is danger, they will fight to save themselves. Rat teeth is very very strong. They chew through everything, um, including your snake. And if you're going to leave your rat unattended with your snake for more than 15 minutes, which is not recommended, your rat may or my mouse may start to chew on your snake. Um, therefore, if you feed live feeding, you do not leave them there for more than 15 minutes and it has to be supervised. You need to be there to make sure your rat isn't retaliating or attacking your snake. Hey buddy, Mac is so sweet. He's my sweetest little boy. So that's one main reason not to feed live and, and recommend it to switch frozen thought because of the danger a live rat, especially when they grow to be this size, even a small rat, which is a little bit smaller than this size, about six weeks old is a small rat, six to eight, four to six weeks they have enough teeth to do damage. The only time you can leave a live rat or mouse in a tub or a tank unattended is when they are babies, like pinkies, pinkies, fuzzies, even hoppers. It's very, that's when the teeth has started to grow on mouse. Mouse, hoppers is really applied to mice. Even then, most hoppers, you know, it's as soon as they grow teeth, that's when you really need to like supervise the live feeding. Hey buddy, go explore. You need some exercise, fatty. So, he's just so nosy. Oh, you're so cute. You're such a good boy. So then, um, I brought him here in this bathroom just so I can film them. Normally they get to run around in a room or they spend their, during the daytime, they're in a cage sleeping. But I took them out so that way I can film them for this video. Anyways, so that's number one. Number two, another reason why you won't, don't want live feed. What do you do with your rat or mouse if your snake refuses? One of the main reasons to feed live was because you have a picky eater to begin with. And live feeding tend to trigger that hunter response and gets them to eat better. 
not guaranteed, but it does help. That's why I recommend live feeding if you have a baby ball python or so forth at the beginning. And it, what's up, buddy? And it's not eating for you. That's the only time I really recommend it to get the babies to snake to start eating. And live feeding seems to be a good option at that age. So what do you do if you, for example, have a adult ball python? This is usually a big problem. Adult ball pythons not eating even after you have offered a live, which used to work when they were hatchlings. Guess what? It's on you. You are responsible. <laughs> They're climbing on my lap. You are responsible for you, that animal. As snake keepers, we have to be kind to animals, okay? It's not even, if you're in it to torture animals, you're in it for any reason other than to be humane to all animals, including that mouse or that rat that it won't, that it's not been eaten. You, I'm sorry, you're just making our hobby look bad, okay? Because we're, we're not in it to torture animals. You have a responsibility to that animal you brought into your home, including the feeder animal. So find a cage, don't use a tub. They usually can chew through them unless you have a hopper mouse or something younger. If you have an, a small rat, for example, put it in a tank, a spare tank. You should have a spare tank laying around. Um, there are, uh, there's something called a rat manor sold at Petco. You can get that for $50 online sometimes um, when they have a sale going on. Whatever it is, you have to house it, feed it, water it until the next feeding attempt, if it didn't grow in size. You can feed it with a little bit of cereal and bread, with some vegetables. You can do it. I don't see any reason why anyone just won't do it. I have, it, it aggravates me to no end to hear these, see these uh, posts on the forums of people dumping, letting the rat go free or the mouse go free. Oh, let it run into the wild. Look at these rats. This is not a color you find in the wild. These, and this is Mac, he's a feeder rat. These are domesticated rats. These are not wild rats. This is not the same species of rats that you find in New York City. This is not, this is not wild. You can't, if you release them, they will die. They will get hunted. They will get torn apart by dogs and, and birds. And even if they manage to find a way to hide, they will starve to death because they have no idea what to do. The wild rat will not breed with them. The wild rat will attack them because they are not of the same species and do not recognize each other. This is a rat species that is social. This is a domesticated rat. So they rely on people just like the dog and cat is domesticated. This is a domesticated rat that relies on people friendly with people as you can see he's just he doesn't mind me you can't do this with a wild rat you can't they they don't do this with you they don't come up to you they don't rely on you for food and warmth and water and all that okay so yes your feeder rat can be a pet your feeder rat is a domesticated rat no different than any other pet rat that you see at the pet store you let them go they will die a terrible death and it, it, it irritates me to no end that people would do this just because they're too lazy to house them for another week or two weeks until it's time to... And then Mac keeps climbing up front. Okay, buddies. You, it's, you can't even house them for a little bit longer until it's feed, and another feeding attempt. Or maybe find someone, someone who's willing to take them as pets. Whatever the case is, do not release them if you cannot feed them. And that's the number two con about live feeding that you may end up with that situation uh, where you're going to have a rat here, or maybe maybe more. The more times your snake refuses, the more times you're going to have an extra rat laying around. So what do you do with that? You, most pet stores will not take them back. They just won't. Especially with this COVID situation, they won't take them back. So what do you do with this extra rat? You take care of it. You're responsible for it until you find a way, find a home for them, or you keep them as pets. They don't live very long. They only live about two to three years the most. And they make wonderful pets. As you can see, this is Mac. Wonderful, sweet, sweet rat. He keeps snuggling up to me. He's a good boy. So number three, finding a source that sells live rats, the size that you need it. So not all pet stores breed their own feeders some of them get them shipped to them so you may not find the size that you needed at the time so let's say you're looking for a uh, small rat the 
pet store doesn't have it. They're waiting for a shipment or maybe the ones they bred have sold out. So then you're going to have to look elsewhere. It can be uh, problematic depending on where you live and what's your next uh, closest pet store. And it can be expensive too. PetSmart um, doesn't sell feeders as far as I know. PetSmart, Petco, they don't sell them. So you have to go to an actual reptile store to find these. And they can cost a lot of money. You, uh, uh, a rat of this size can cost you about $2.50 each at minimum or even more. It depends on how much they want the, the pet store wants to charge. So that's the cost and excess. So those are three things I don't recommend for live feeding. So why, do, why would I recommend live feeding? As I mentioned before, only if you have a very stubborn feeder snake, a snake that won't eat, it is a baby. It needs to eat. It hasn't eaten for you for at least three to four weeks. And you don't, you don't see it as, you know, you check your husbandry, you checked everything. Everything's accurate. You let ask for help and it, all the tips wasn't working. You're feeding inside the tank. You're not taking the snake out to feed. You followed all the, all the tips you're supposed to. Your temperature's right. Your humidity is right. You downsize your tank. And your bald python or whatever snake is still not eating. Then you can try a live hopper mouse. Hopper mouse seem to the hopper mice seem to get a better reaction than rats. You can also try rats. If the breeder sold it to you um, eating pinkies, red pinkies, then go with red pinkies. You will feed it a live red pinky. Whatever the breeder fed, you will follow that for at least two, two to three meals. Then you can consider switching to frozen thought after your snake is in good health condition. So that's what you do. That's the con that that's the pro in it to, to get your baby snake to eat because they just can't afford to starve to death. An adult ball python, for example, they can they are meant to go on a fast for six months at a time. So if your snake is not eating and it's about a year old for a male or older or females that hit hit a certain weight of about thousand grams or close to it, they will just stop eating for about six months. It's just life. Or maybe 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 it's breeding season or it's winter time. A drop in temperature can cause them to stop eating. Don't panic. Give them the, give one attempt to feed once a, once every three weeks to once to every four weeks. If it doesn't try, it doesn't take it. Try again. Frozen thought, I mean. And if they still won't eat it after several attempts, you're starting to see the the the, the, the weight the weight loss. You're starting to see the spine. They lost over twenty percent of their weight for the adult ball pythons. And you tried everything you could. You heat it up as warm as you can. It had eaten for you before and suddenly it stopped eating and you're really, really concerned. Then feeding it live, small rat, something smaller than it was, what's accustomed to, would probably help break that fast. But you don't want to do it unless you absolutely have to because then you have to transition it back to frozen thought. And getting a snake like a ball python to eat live and then going back to frozen thought the next day, it's not going to happen. They may get hooked and may not want to go back to frozen thought and you have to go through all the, the whole process again. So the, what are the cons of frozen thought feeders? Well, you got to find a place to buy them and you have, have them shipped you ship to you or you go to the store. I recommend you buying frozen thought rodents from an online supplier. It is 10 times cheaper than you get at a pet store. You get a better deal and it's in all the almost all the sizes that you need is pack, packed ooh, air sealed vacuum sealed that will last you for about six months it will last you about six months so i buy all my frozen thought rodents at uh, bigcheeserodents.com really really great place to get everything that you need including chicks if you you want to pick up some chicks for your snakes it's a great place to buy the, uh, your feeders I love that website, easy to use. Ah, the only problem with that website is that they sometimes run out of uh, rats, uh, certain uh, large, large rats or jumbo mice, but for the smaller ones like pinkies and hoppers and, 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 and uh, so forth, the frozen thought, they're almost always available. So, and their shipping is great, $29 flat fee shipping. You get it in about three days and I never had a problem with the packing. You can also try Perfect Prey. I've also ordered from Perfect Prey. They're really good. I did have my a problem with shipping the, the packaging, but the people were very nice. They worked with me immediately. They responded to me immediately by email and I got a, a replacement. So I recommend Perfect Prey as well. 
buddy, my hands are not food. So that, that's the con you may have to buy in bulk, so to save on shipping. Shipping is very expensive because they have to use dry ice. So um, it may cost you more at the start, but if you calculate it per unit, it's actually a lot cheaper per unit. So it's actually worth it. But if you have one or two snakes, it you know, you may not be worth it because that's a, that's a lot of rodent. Are you guys tired out? That's a lot of rodents to purchase. Um, and you have to finish them within six months. You can either find a buddy who, who owns snakes and share that cost with you, or get more snakes. <laughs> or, you know, maybe you don't mind going to the store and get what you need once a week. That's fine too. You can make that decision. But Frozen Thought is much more available online. You just have to buy them in bulk. That's the, the first con. And uh, what's another con of about that? Uh... I don't have any I can think of, to be honest. You just gotta make sure you warm them up correctly. I never had a, a, a package come in where the, 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 you know, I had an issue warming up the rodent or it explodes by touch or something. They are, they, they, the, 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 the companies I just recommended, recommended, I never had an issue. So I, I don't have a negative experience with Frozen Thought because of these companies, as well as I have purchased them from Underground in person, which is, you know, another video. I'll make a video about Underground about that. So you just got to know your sizes. Unfortunately, you won't be able to see the sizes in person because they're online. And they, a lot of them will give you a measurement of how long and how big it is and how heavy it is. So you're going to have to go by the measurement they provided and with your best judgment. So if you have a little baby corn snake, you may want to start, you may want to order a day old pinky or small pinkies, not just a regular pinky, but a small pinky. And if you order the wrong size, guess what? You're going to have to either make a new order or just go to the store. So that's another con is that, you know, you got to know your size of what you're looking for, or it's kind of like trial and error. Um, some suppliers may not have the proper size. They may list a small red. And when you get the package, it's actually smaller than a small red. That has happened to me before. It's not a big deal. You can always, you know, double up on the rodent, uh, on the feeding. Just double up to, to, to add up to what you needed. Silly, silly rats. Um, and that's about it. That's what I really have for, you know, I have more cons in live feeding than frozen thought. And again, I have nothing against live feeding. I think it's great if you need to use it. It has a purpose. The snakes got to eat, and sometimes, unfortunately, it's what we have to do to get the, our snakes to eat. What I don't appreciate is people telling me that they're feeding life because nature, it's nature, it's what's natural to them. Let me tell you right now, okay, all the snakes that we keep in captivity, it is nothing natural about them. We keep them in tubs, we keep them in tanks, and no matter how pretty, how many fake plants you put in there and how many fake uh, lights you put in there, that is not their natural habitat. This is not Africa for ball python. This is not Madagascar for the Duros boa. This is not where they live. I mean, no, it doesn't matter how what how, what your bioactive uh, terrarium is. If you like it natural, then the, the the good choice, best choice, is just not to have them and leave them where they are. You know that the they just just don't have them. But the fact that is that we bred them, we bred these morphs, they are, and then we bred generations of these snakes to be used to captive living, to be to live in a tank. And not freak out. All right away, these snakes are not wild in the way, in the same sense as you would think of them in nature. They don't know what a predator looks like. They don't know what a natural their natural prey is. A ball python natural prey will be the African software rat and other animals, which is nothing what we're feeding them in captivity. We do not. They won't find these rats. These rats in in the wild. They just won't. This is domesticated feeder rats that we use or pet rats or whatever you want to call it, lab rats. This is not what you find in the wild. Even for a corn snake, this is not what they will find in the wild. Not the same species. So right away, that whole idea is, is bullshit. Okay. And not only that, these rats, again, are domesticated. They know nothing about, you know, predators. They don't know what a snake is. So to put a rat who knows nothing about how to hide, how to run away from predators 
into a tank, a locked tank where they cannot escape with a snake that doesn't even know what uh, their, their natural prey would look like. They just follow their instincts, they strike, they eat, but they don't know the difference. If you were to place the wild rat in a tub with a snake that has no experience, more than likely that rat will, will tear it to pieces. A wild rat would have known 10 times better on how to avoid and what to do. And these rats don't. So there's no need for that. There's absolutely no need. If you want enrichment for your snake, you would you can just decorate the terrarium. You can add things to climb. You can add more uh, things to hide in, to crawl under, to crawl over. Whatever it is, you can go do that. You go to the hardware store and pick up whatever you need. You can go to the pet store and pick up whatever you need to decorate your tank. But to say that you're feeding life strictly because it's what's natural, it, that is bullshit. It makes no sense if you really want to follow that theory. No sense at all. And to see, the, you know, the enjoyment of watching these rats die, that I don't even want to go into it. Because a lot of us, a lot of our snake, snake keepers, there is no joy in us to do this. I take no pleasure when I feed life at all. I hated it every single time. They scream sometimes. They do scream. They can die very quickly. Or if your snake misses, your rat or your mouse dies very slowly. So there is no pleasure in that as well as the risk that your snake could get hurt. Just because you wanted to, to take enjoyment and, and watching it do what's natural. It can do what's natural with frozen thought. It does the same exact thing. Except it's a lot safer. That is all. I hope this um, video gave you some information. Even though it ended up being a little bit of a rant.